<laughs> We're gonna go ahead and get some bags on us. This is the original one. Yeah. Right. We don't finish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it. Okay. Okay. Second. I'm all for it. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. You hereby notified that a special call meeting for the Palaka Community Redevelopment Agency has been called to be held on Thursday, September 10th. 2015 at the regular meeting place at City Hall, City Commission Chambers, 201 North 2nd Street, Palatka, Florida. This meeting is called to commence at 4 p.m. The purpose of this meeting is to hold a discussion and make recommendations concerning the 2015-16 budget. Community Redevelopment Agency Tax Increment Fund budgets. We will now have our invocation by Mr. Deputy. All about the question of flag. <coughs> Father, we thank you for this time that you have allowed us to gather together to make plans and to work for the future of our city. We ask your blessing upon the leaders of our city, upon our residents, and just upon all the activity that happens within our boundaries. And Father, we just pray that in your son's precious name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Hegel? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Campbell? Present. Commissioner Borum? Commissioner Norwood? Present. Commissioner Flagg? Present. Commissioner Deputy? Present. Uh, President, except Commissioner Borum. Okay, we're moving to public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Seeing nobody here, we'll close public comment. We'll move on to item number two, presentation and discussion of the proposed 2015-16 CRA tax implement fund budget. Let the record reflect that Commissioner Borum is here. Matt Reynolds, Finance Director. I don't really have a presentation today to talk about the CRA budget. Um, I prepared a short summary on the uh, on the agenda item to kind of go over the, the two changes that were made. Um, for the, for the CRA's uh, direction at, at the uh, workshop on August 31st. Uh, we split the $57,000 that we had for the Main Street program into two separate lines, $45,000 for Main Street manager salary, $12,000 for the marketing portion, and uh, we moved the, the $30,000 for the relocation of the clock tower back into redevelopment incentives line, and so now that line has a, a total amount of approximately $117,000 in it. So. Those are the only changes that we made. Uh, everything else that we presented at the uh, at the workshop uh, remained the same, and I also attached the the detailed revenue and expenditure sheets for the budget uh, to the agenda package. So uh, I'll just ask if, if uh, the CRA board has has any input or, or any discussion regarding anything that's included in the budget. Um, we would like to. Uh, we would like to uh, discuss that. Ma'am, I, I have a question. Since we aren't going to move the clock tower this time, we wanted to have a fountain down um, to that. We need a repair fountain, and we wanted to get the uh, fountain that, what you call the one that the water comes up and then keeps so it. Splash pad? Yeah, the splash pad. Is it possible <coughs> uh, any, of that, any of those funds to? be used to um, to do those two fountains or I know another project that that's kind of been discussed as well is um, doing a, a vaulted um, stormwater system in the area that the retention pond is um, uh, in the riverfront park now I know that uh, Jonathan brought that up in the past and that would add more green space back to the park as well 
just just a thought. I wanted to. How, how, much, is, how much is that, uh, Jonathan? Jonathan, could you tell us how much those projects would be so we could see if it was a standalone right? stormwater project like that? Probably one hundred fifty thousand. If it's sequenced with the CPG project, you could probably realize you know ten thousand dollars in savings. And then what about if we did uh, repairs to the uh, memorial fountain at the same? Is somebody doing it or have they done it or should we? We look? had a commitment from um, a third party and they haven't really followed through. Um, in our opinion, the fountain needs, needs to be reconstructed. That means new pumping system, new filtration system, uh, new piping, new lighting. So you're basically looking at a brand new fountain. And then what about the... Uh, the other kind of splash. Uh, depending on the size, it can range anywhere from seventy thousand to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Estimated cost on repairs of the, of the memorial fountain are yeah. uh, replacing. We got one contractor to look at it uh, <coughs> on GC, not subbing it out ourselves, and quoting back somewhere in the neighborhood of forty-five to fifty thousand dollars. Again, you know, we could probably get in there and realize how to do it a little bit more cost effectively, but you know, we got that quote a couple years ago uh, when the uh, Bassmaster Elite was coming to town and we were contemplating just getting it up and going. I think that's something that we need to consider. Though. We've been talking about it for several years and we're trying to enhance what it looks like down there. So I think we need to at least try to put it on the radar. Yes, sir. Does that fountain carry someone's name? Is it veterans or whose whose name? It's a veterans fountain. It's just a veterans memorial. It's actually called Veterans Memorial Plaza. That's what's on the dedication plaque. Okay. Well, you know, um, they they were in here at one time, and several of them gave me their cards, and they said they would be happy to meet with us to, to do something. So they might be able to help us raise some of the funds to do it. Well, I was going to raise it if the city had a specific amount then with as many different veteran groups that are out there uh, and then just uh, the patriotic spirit of the community there may be a way to uh, fundraise yeah to do that so that so that it's done and not just uh, hanging in a budget dilemma. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was also thinking that we may be able to reach out to some corporate partners in the community and get them to just be able to you know to be able to be the sponsor of the veterans of the remodel of the veterans board of You know, way. we need to really do that splash by the bed too, because <clears throat> it really, if you go to any city that has one of those, you have people that are there most of the time. And it goes not only for the kids, but older people. And it, it really fills up the area with it, and it looks really good. Um, so maybe on, we can look for corporate sponsors and some <coughs> We've been talking about a splash fountain. I have visited everyone within six hours of here, um, including the downtown Atlanta. That one is just a mega attraction. Uh, the one at downtown Disney. The one at Daytona is ruled by adults. Kids are thrown to the side. Yeah. And we've all named places that has a great, yes. a great financial. <coughs> No, back Lake Butler. I saw Lake Butler. 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 I mean, I think this would be a good idea if we could try to see about fundraising for this as well. In addition to our ongoing maintenance as well, um, with, depending on the magnitude of how, what the scale of it is, it is large. It's like what we talked about last time, yeah. Yeah. which is so, I mean, yeah. it's having it and having it and taking care of it. Right. Those are things. <laughs> and where we are right now. I think you have to take care of what you have before you bring something new in. <laughs> I definitely agree. I saw the splash pad over in uh, in Claremont just recently, and they've got a an area that's very similar to our riverfront on the on the lake, and uh, they've got a beautiful splash pad. I actually took some pictures of it, uh, and it was it was being used very well. But I think we've I think it's definitely something that we can put on the agenda as a future project. But I think that. We need to make sure we can take care of what we got because we haven't done that, and we're and a lot of that stuff is deteriorating. Um, I think maybe time. I think our first project we should look at is, is trying to get the fountain up and running again, more so than and let's try to get the stuff we got in place 
gain the green space back that we have on the riverfront that we lost by way of retention. And Jonathan, I don't know, is there an opportunity in covering that space up to use it as splash? Um, Would there be a way you could incorporate that into the above ground uh, retention? Yeah, and it actually fits in well with the FERDAP project that we have on the books for this next year, the nature-based playground, which will be sited adjacent to that area amongst the oak trees. So um, uh, yes, we could probably um, use that space um, for a smaller splash bed. As a part of that. Uh, if, if the hotel is using that retention pond for their meeting their code, could the hotel not help us vault that retention pond? You can always ask. I mean, it, it, that's the only reason they got to build was because they needed that space, right? Uh, let, let me uh, remind them something. We, we got all these computers in here and Dale does most of them. And we got all these computer companies and, and the telephone people, everybody got cell phones and stuff. If you go to pay your light bill, you got to go pay it in some little store or something. They don't think enough of us to, to put an office here or a telephone. We need to um, approach some of them and say, look, we'll name it after you because that's what they do with football fields and everything. But you need to help us in our community more. And I'd like to see us first fix up the fountain that's there. But I definitely think if we keep putting stuff off, we'll never get the splash pad there because we've been talking about it for many, many years. And look at somebody adopting it to help us keep it up. I mean, we can't maintain a we can't maintain a fountain with no people in it. Now we want to maintain a splash pad. <laughs> All right, Mr. Well, that's a difference. It brings a different a difference <coughs> to it. It's a recreational thing and everything. And I think that um, at one time with the uh, island along the highway, we asked the people who had businesses along there to um, to volunteer to have uh, one of those areas and we put a sign up and they went in and they planted and they helped us keep those things up. I think sometimes if you don't ask, they tell us all the time, you don't get. So I think that we need to approach it and approach some of these folks and say, look, we want to get better. We want to be beautiful. We want people to stop here and we want to have attractions. And they're taking our money. And I think that some of the businesses that use the computers and things, get them to sign off on how many things we got here and just ask for that help. And I think that we will we'll get it. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Kind of, I guess to kind of put us back on the task. Uh, Let's ask the veterans as well as our business community if the, if they would help us uh, uh, repair the memorial fountain. It's been asked, yeah, and it's been asked, and they've already they responded they, in the affirmative. Okay. We just got to uh, have a day to meet with them and call them in. Okay. I have several cards, and uh, I'll give them to city manager to call and see if you can. I think it would be a definitive plan as to what you're going to do, how much enhancement, how much renovation is going to happen, and until you have that, you don't need to ask nobody for a dollar because they need to know what the overall goal is, and I think there has to be a scope uh, designed to do that. My, my real question is, I think you guys are talking city commission business, and if you all will stick with CRA stuff right now, it would be nice for the benefit of the two that is not commissioners. Oh, well, I, think. Oh, I, I think we're talking Riverfront. We are talking CRA. We no, talking I'm talking CRA. about your fundraising. Your fundraising is not CRA. That's city commission stuff. CRA yeah. has the ability to do it as well. It's okay. partnership. All right. We won't just we won't Public, just private that. partnership. That's not I get them out of the point. Just, just a no. Hold on a second. Just a Mr. comment. Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman. Hold on one second. Some, sometimes uh, people buy in more to helping in a project that they have a little bit of input into how the project's going to mm -hmm. be developed. Just suggesting that if you guys decide that you are going to get the veterans involved or you might want to get them in yeah, early, early yes, on so that they could maybe provide a little bit of input into mm -hmm. to how they'd like to. Uh, they, I'm not saying they'd be in control of it, but sometimes people work a lot harder if they think they've had a little bit of input into what they're going to be working for. Just a comment. As a segue to what my next point was, 
we talk about the various different components and it does make it appear that we're piecemealing it. And so I guess my question is, what master plan are we going by for the various different components that we're talking about? Is the full master plan being followed or are we revising it as we go? Because I know there are a lot of plans over the years uh, that have existed. So when we talk about doing the fountain over, we already, I think, dealt with the fact that the clock is, is already home. It's not going to to, to move uh, in this particular season. But is there, quote, a master plan that specifically says uh, the issues that you're talking about with the retention pond, the issues with the splash pads, is, is that a moving uh, plan or is that a, an existing plan that people can look at and, and have an appreciation for? Well, we've, we've had discussions internally about the CRA needing to revisit yeah, the CRA plan and update the CRA plan as it hasn't been done mm -hmm. in how, how many years? It's been since 2009. It's been a while. So uh, I think that's the, the bigger picture is we need to have you know guidance from the CRA and, and take a revisit to the CRA plan. I'd like to say this to Mel. <coughs> you know, we do plans, and it's wonderful because I know we have to plan. But I've been sitting here a long time and looking at plans that we have. We plan to plan to plan. We we need to make sure if we are sitting here putting our heart and time and energy in that we are going to move forward with some of these plans. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, in relation to the last plan being a part of our plan, I think four years ago, we actually, uh, the commission actually decided that we would, we would want a last plan, a flash pad <laughs> on the, on the river front. <laughs> so, um, and I think that, you know, we were actually looking for funding mechanisms and that kind of thing in order to do it with. So, uh, as far as the overall plan goes, I think the, uh, commission did approve the splash pan. Uh, splash pan. Pad. Pad. <coughs> splash pan. We, splash we pad. know what you're saying. Go around the But I got, I got <laughs> If, if I could, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, just uh, to echo uh, the the comments here so far, as well as those of Mr. Reynolds and, and uh, Mr. Griffith. I think it's imperative that once we get through the budget process uh, on September 24th, we have an idea of what the CRA is wanting to get accomplished this fiscal year in their budget and put that in our plan. And I think it's very imperative that shortly thereafter we get back together as an organization to decide what it is we want to work on in the next three to five years so that when we come back to these meetings, there's already, and I, and I agree with Ms. Ms. Lawson Brown, that we can plan ourselves to death, but if we have that plan in front of us, we know what we've discussed and what our target dates were, and then if we want to adjust something, we'll have something to adjust from. But I think with the CRA in particular, because it is a TIF funding system, we need a CRA plan that's adopted by this agency so we can have that uh, for our future references. And I think it's a need for a visioning and a strategic, Absolutely plan, and a strategic planning session that identifies concrete goals as to where mm -hmm. we're going to go from a director standpoint. And that's something that we need to do. We can't do it now. So it's something mm -hmm. we have to do something with the budget. Correct. And we need to get that on the calendar um, as soon as we can after the budget season is mm -hmm. over. Um, it goes back to the comments that Commissioner Flagg had before as it related to the sale of the property uh, on the riverfront. There, there needs to be a general scope as to where we are, direction, so that we can move forward and start to and put everything in place. And that's that's kind of comprehensive all over for, it, mm -hmm. for everything we're mm -hmm. doing. Um, Absolutely. But I, I, there are needs. I think the splash pad is a is something that we can move towards. Increasing the green space, all those things are things that we can move toward from the CRA. But we also have to be conscious of projects outside of the central district and outside of the riverfront. And I think that we're we're continually centralizing all our dollars to one area and again neglecting those areas past sixth street, past seventh street, and further down in, in our tip districts. And so we need to look at those things as well. You know, in particular uh, the parking lot that we talked about before, the you know, the resurfacing of the parking lot, things of that nature. And those are things that we have to make sure that those projects are also come to fruition. 
And if yeah, I could, we need to add. We also need to add trees because the trees that we have down um, St. John's now are yeah, outlived their time, and we want to make sure that when people hit our main street, that they see the beauty that we have in it. And those trees are. I don't know how we're going to go about it, if we're going to put them in or we're going to ask people to volunteer and do it. I noticed that down where Beck is, they have tree lined the streets and it really looks looks nice where they have put their car lots and things. So you go down there, it looks nice to pass through that area. So we need to make sure we, we put that somewhere in the way Mr. Chairman, I think we I think we need to put together that strategic plan and all more sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Of course, we have one. We just haven't used it. Well, I mean, I'm sitting that's that's right what here. often reviewer. That's what I mean. Uh, but I do have a question about a line item in the budget here. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going back to uh, the floating floating dock for $15,000. I'm still a little confused because traditionally this has been the money for the fireworks. Mm -hmm. So we're putting the fireworks in the city budget, is that correct? Fireworks have, have always been part of the city budget. And okay, the, the, the 15 has been a transfer to the general fund to help pay for the fireworks show. Okay, so, but our budget is not city budget until we give it to them. It's CRA, this is CRA budget. Mm -hmm. So the CRA has funded the fireworks 15,000 per year. Okay, this year we're not doing that. So the city is committing to the fireworks is my question. What we did in the general fund budget, the city's budget, is we put 18,000 in right. estimated contributions and 18,000 for the actual show itself. So that's something that, that we also discussed was um, attempting to the get the, the in, yes. Okay. Mr. Correct. Mr. Sutton, administrative discussions is getting do, uh, enough donations to fully fund the entire show. Okay. And if you don't, this this will not be available is what I'm asking. Once the CRA budget is, is set, if it's set at 15,000, any additional funds have to, of course, be approved by the CRA board. But it, like I said, that it's... it's well, this the, the 15,000 here, according to the notes, is, being, is for a floating dock, not for the fireworks. Mm -hmm. So I, I, what I'm asking is the city budget is committed through donations or if not through the city budget for the fireworks excel, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Now going back to the fifteen thousand for the budget for the is it necessary is this floating dock necessary now or is it necessary when the fuel tanks are put in and when are we projected to do that? I would have to. I mean, are we sitting? Johnson are we sitting on a floating dock for years, waiting when we don't really need it except for once a year? Mr. Deputy, let me yes. see if I can. We're planning for the fiscal year 15-16, okay? Correct. And we have to prepare for whether or not we're going to be able to use the dock that we have in place this year currently for the fireworks in July of 2016. So we're trying to budget ahead in case there's an issue that we need to move forward with. We've already got those, that $15,000 allocated for that expense. For the floating dock. Correct. If for mm -hmm. some reason we do not need to allocate that $15,000 this year, well then it will either A, be moved to something else or rolled over to next year. So that $15,000 is allocated for the potential use to purchase whatever dock system we need for the fireworks if it comes to fruition in 1516. And going back to your other... And if not, we're just going to sit on it versus using it. It's not, well, no, that will be a discretionary decision <coughs> to the agency. It will be available to you for another project if so de desire, but then it will have to come back in front of this agency for approval. And, and going back to the question about whether or not the CRA is funding the fireworks this year or not, the potential that, or, or the budget that we put together for the city commission was an $18,000 offset of expenses versus donations, you know, to cover those expenses. If we don't get those donations, once again, if the CRA or the, or the city commission feels the need to come back in front of this agency to say we're X number of dollars short for these, the uh, fireworks uh, display, would it be 
uh, you know, that, that would be an entertained thought of this agency then if you would like to make a budget amendment to uh, sponsor that portion of the unpaid fireworks show. So all this is is a living, working, breathing document that can at any time, with the will of this commission, be altered or amended. So this is the, we're putting a good faith document forward for you to, to have in your hands moving forward for the fiscal year. And one last question. When do we anticipate the fuel tanks or the fueling for the city dock? I'm not sure. Jonathan, do we have an estimated time for that? We're still waiting on some information back from the prospective uh, operator. Uh, yeah. Spoke in a couple of days because there's still no answer. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's not just related to the fuel. Uh, as soon as you have docks mooring at the city pier that are within that, I believe it's the 300 foot radius. 350 or 400 feet, 400 foot. Yeah. Uh, you can't you can't fire the fireworks off the dock, or you have to have them moved. So um, those are your options. You either right. take people off the dock for a day, um, or we relocate the fireworks. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Any other questions? Comments? So does that mean everyone's satisfied with the amendments we've got thus far? Is somebody looking for a main street manager or uh, we looking for a main street manager or what? <clears throat> now allocated a, a forty-five thousand uh, dollar salary within the CRA budget. If the if the uh, CRA, if the agency so chooses to fund this budget or approve this budget, we'll begin the process. Let me ask you another question as well. Uh, you know, our last meeting we talked about Main Street as well as the uh, downtown black Inc. Uh, and staff get together and kind of put together a marketing <coughs> strategy. Uh, did, have we done that yet? Uh, is that in the works of what we're, where we're at? Mm -hmm. I think Main Street's meeting is set for the 12th. Yeah, Main Street has their planning session this Saturday. I know it's this Saturday, right? You know, we're talking about a marketing strategy for this budget. That was our discussion in our last meeting. But I think their conversation was that they wouldn't do it until after they had their planning strategy, okay. until they had their planning meeting on the 12th. Yeah. So, um, we were trying to see if they could meet earlier, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. said that they couldn't. Okay. I would still like to speak at some point about putting the Main Street manager as a contracted out, you know, out from under the city and nothing personal mm -hmm. out underneath the city manager as an independent thing so that there can be more cooperation um, it would just if you're a, it would just solidify the downtown business community um, not to have that position underneath the city you know Main Street Deland does just that very same thing um, they contract give the money to Main Street Main Street hires their Main Street manager fires their Main Street manager. He's not in City Hall. Um, he is. The fact is, for a while, his office was in the back of a clothing store, <laughs> right amongst the business people. Um, Mr. Deputy, I just, that, that concept seems to work in other locations. Okay. And, and it may just well work very well in other locations. I just don't know where we're at with the City of Palatka and the uh, Main Street manager's position that we uh, we haven't had since I got here and uh, since I have arrived here. You know, I get really nervous and concerned when we're expending um, taxpayers' dollars that the city is uh, uh, responsible for on a position that the city doesn't have any control over. That, that, that concerns me greatly and I just uh, until we go through the process and until we've had a Main Street manager that I've worked with, uh, quite frankly, I have to use that as working with me as a city manager, I don't know if I, if I can support not doing that at this time. Again, in the future, who knows, but I really think that with us being the, the stewards that we are of taxpayers' dollars, that the city needs to be, have some type, of, uh, some type of oversight of that. And that's just my opinion. I, I, I do understand that. <clears throat> 
no problem with that. I know in talking to other main streets, I see how they work. Uh, the land was in a much worse state than we were, different location, you know, et cetera. Uh, they're now at what, 95% occupancy? They were below, below us at one time. Maybe what we need to do then, instead of worrying about the oversight, is get a copy of their plan and see how it worked. Um, well, they did some things that we might not have the guts to do. Um, uh, but um, I think if you spoke to Main Street or spoke to the merchants group, you would, from both groups, get what I'm saying from both groups mm -hmm. solidly. And, and I think we need to remember also, I understand taxpayer, you know, I am a taxpayer in the city. Um, I live in the CRA district and I work in the CRA district. I'm one of a handful that do both. Mary Lawson is one. Um, so I do understand that, but I also understand it's my tax money. Uh, I'm, and, and the building owners and business owners you know, are looking for more of a relationship that we're not getting from government, and I'm not sure it's possible um, to get from government. Okay. There's always that fine line of nine to five. Okay. Is we'll, it possible? We'll have y'all reconvene that conversation yes. after we get through this budget process. <laughs> and we're going to stay on task today. <laughs> so, someone got the CRAC recommendation to the uh, commission. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Is there any discussion? As we the motion, seeing none, we will go ahead and call the question. All in favor, we'll go roll call. Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Campbell? Yes. Commissioner Borum? Yes. Commissioner Norwood? Yes. Commissioner Clyde? Yes. Mr. Deputy? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. We will now move on to item three of the agenda, which is our adjournment. We'll have comments by anyone on the commission, uh, on the agency, I'm sorry. We'll start out with Mr. Deputy. No problem. No, Mr. Brown? Um, do you want to comment on what you just said, a uh, history lesson? I, 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 think, I think this is a, an opportunity to further that conversation. We're going to do it from a discussion standpoint. Okay. I would like to say maybe uh, if they want to do it, try it for you and maybe come back at, with our next budget year to see if it works really well with you putting it into somebody else's hands. We did it at one time. We turned it over and they they uh, had an office at the chamber and gave chamber money and they worked from the chamber to do it. It did not work really well and we had to take it back and put put it back in our uh, building across the street. But times have changed and maybe if we looked at it uh, on a year-to-year -year basis, maybe for a couple of years, and then if it worked well, extended it, it might see what kind of changes it can be. And I, and I think that was the purpose of Commissioner Norwood asking for the marketing plan to figure out if the plan, to see the viability of the plan to determine if that would be a good idea or not. Mm -hmm. So that's what, and that's just, that was my thought. Am I, that, that correct? That's, that's part of it. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Borm? Uh, nothing to add. Commissioner Flack? Nothing. Okay. Commissioner Norwood? No. And I'll close out. I, and, I, and I guess I need to get a, a consensus. Would, are we amenable to having, starting our, our having that visioning session where we talk about from a strategic standpoint of developing the strategic plan for this fiscal year and for or beyond for at least a half a five year document as it relates to where we are from CRA standpoint. Um, I think that that also that meeting will allow us to determine if we want to continue to CRA in its current capacity, uh, which is something that we've still held in abeyance and have not made a decision on overall. Um, what we're going to do as far as it relates to Main Street Manager and what are going to be our and what's our direction as far as projects in the CRA and the overall scope. And so I think that um, if everybody's amenable, we can try to set that up 
within the next 30 days or so once we get out of budget and let's say uh, you know, sometime in October give us a few weeks to get past budgeting and go from there uh, I'm sure your numbers on your budget are a lot different than ours uh, so, <laughs> so, so, so. Man, could I, could I ask you uh, this, you know we just you just got our city manager here he came in two weeks second week in July right yeah. And he jumped right in. Can we give him a cup of one or a couple of weeks? Ain't no to breaks. <laughs> a breathing, a, 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 for him to pull some stuff together and give us some of his input and ideas. And See if he can give us a break. You ran. He was expecting. 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 He was um, <laughs> yeah, have, I don't think he know how to function with breathing room right now. Because no, what he does, he keeps pulling Matt Reynolds with it, so they, they burn it up. <laughs> so, Chip, I think that concerning the Main Street manager, the issue was not uh, the loyalty <laughs> and the vision of the person who walked in the shoes. It's the ability to be able to take direction from different entities who sometimes are not agreed. And that puts that person really on the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, there cannot be uh, five chiefs, uh, ten chiefs. Uh, you know that that created a little bit of a problem. And so I think that the visioning session and once you got that document that everybody can agree on, it won't matter where that person is sitting. It won't matter. None of those you know none of those things will matter. And I think that the person was not equipped with the tools they needed, and they were trying to satisfied to gods, so to speak, mm -hmm. and, and, and that, that, I think, what, what created the problems in times past. Right. And, and so, I, and, that mm -hmm. brings, and that brings in another, another interesting part of, if we talk about visioning and strategic planning, we, we need to not just have the CRA involved, we need to have DPI and Main Street involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I, I think that if we're ever gonna get to a point of being able to have any type of opportunity for consensus building, then there, then all the players have to be at the mm -hmm. table at one time. Mm -hmm. So it's not, so you know, so there isn't a division as it has been historically. Mm -hmm. And and what I've seen is, I've seen mixed dynamics as it relates to what really, what, what the city's goals are, what Main Street goals are, and what DPI's goals are, or interests for lack of any other term. And and I think we have to have everybody at the table to figure out if there's a way to have. Um, for lack of any other term, a happy median right. and to move forward. And you have to almost have a retreat type of setting right? so that nobody feels that, well, everybody's mind is made up, they're gonna do what they wanna do, it doesn't matter how much time we spend. And I think if the scope is laid out in that fashion, then everybody will, will, will feel like we are seeking consensus. Mm -hmm. And if they also know that it becomes an annual event, that it will not be, quote, something that happens in a meeting uh, and you read about it in the paper that it's going to be uh, mm -hmm. as, as it's needed to be revised. That's when it's right. revised. And, and I think part of what we need to remember too is um, I think I'm the only volunteer up here. No, we all volunteer. No, we all. Well, we're all, we're all volunteers, <laughs> but you know. I, um, uh, anyway, be that as it may, it's like today, <laughs> yesterday. I, I, you know, I was called to a special events meeting uh, for the Christmas parade, which is another volunteer position, three o'clock in the afternoon here at City Hall. Well, do I close my business to come to a Christmas parade meeting? You know, as a small business person, I leave an 84-year-old mother to run it. She does better she than you. It. She, she does, it. and she's been doing Be it. Uh, she's got a whip. To come, so part of what we're doing, we are not volunteer friendly. This, this city is not volunteer friendly. Uh, that's all there is to it. I should not have to leave work to volunteer to come to a meeting to work with the city. I'm not planning, that isn't planning the parade at all. I still have last year 42 and a half hours of volunteer work in the Christmas parade alone because I keep notes. Um, you know, because <laughs> actually there's tax deductions there. Uh, but, you know, that's not the work. To meet with the city is not the volunteer planning at all. Yeah, so you, you can't know? deduct that time if you're not going to take it off from work. 
No, you still get a you still get a little thing in there. Um, but what I'm saying is, you know, if vo volunteers can't come from GP for the most part, they can't get off. They can't, you know, w right down the road. Everything we do in the city has to be at three, four o'clock. Um, so, you know, you leave out three quarters of our population. Well, you leave out everybody that's not retired. You know, and I think we need to revisit the whole thing. You just, you just Planning have sessions should not be at three o'clock or four o'clock, where people have to leave work. You just happen to know how to think. The, so the flip side of that Some is don't get off work. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, 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 the flip side of that, Mr. Deputy, is you're absolutely right. It's it's a strain on the volunteers to to try to get here at three o'clock in the afternoon. And then the flip side of that is the cost that it is upon the city for staff being here beyond the five. I, I, I do understand um, that. You know, I loved, I, I lived in Castleberry 20 some years. Every year, my gosh, the, the city threw us a big chicken dinner. You know, at the Marriott Hotel, hundreds of us. Oh, um, you know. Was it at three o'clock? Under no. Underwritten by. Believe it or not, it was on a Saturday evening, dress the occasion. All right. Uh, here we don't get the we don't even get the box chicken dinner. You know? <laughs> I would do the liver dinner. You know? there you go. You're gonna slice that next year? I think the CRA ought to do it for all the volunteers downtown. I, I think we do it so much printing with uh, graphics. graphics I, I think stuff. the CRA does zero. So let's uh so with that being said it's not, it almost sounded like i was getting ready to hear a motion to adjourn so well, I, 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 i'm waiting for your remarks <laughs>